can't live here anymore because you stopped me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, just talk leave to me. me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. damn minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you again. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, Please what God happened? bless you. Can you imagine having to live terrorized like that every day? And here's the funniest thing. Mr. Perry wants to talk, and I've said no. This is this is why right here. He wants to know who's helping me, who's protecting me from him. Because as bad as my life has been, it would be much worse if I didn't have that protection. Would you talk to somebody that asked you that question, even ask the question? Who's telling on me? Who's helping you? Who's protecting you from me? I've tried to kill you two or three, four times. I've tried to take your home and your car. I've taken all your money. I've, I've gotten your family to hurt you. I've gotten your friends to hurt you. I've gotten your coworkers to hurt you. I've made it where every time you go to work, you're a victim of a crime. Now tell me who's make it, making it not as bad as I want to make it so that I can stop them. Would you have a conversation with someone that nutty? The question in and of itself, Mr. Perry, is insane. It speaks to your delusion. Why in the hell would I help you? He says he's got photos of me. I, I mean, constantly. I got photos of you. I got photos of you. I'm so happy we got evidence against you. No, you don't, because I haven't. I didn't. I didn't commit a crime, Mr. Perry. These podcasts are exactly what she's doing. She's sitting here showing the police. This is what this guy's doing to me. This is what he's doing to me. And guess what? She went to them for help, and they weren't. They weren't helpful for her. When she did this, then all of a sudden they decided to help her. Thank God I have police from somewhere else helping me. Mr. Perry, you are creepy, you're rejected, and you're told on. And you messed with me again all day today, and you got told on again today. What photos? You're a stalker. Here's the allegations, Mr. Perry. You're a stalker. I moved twice to get away from you. Stalking is a felony crime in Oklahoma. It's a crime in all 50 states. For you, it's interstate. It's federal. You're a peeping Tom. You are, we have a witness. I've said this so many times. Here's the thing also with Mr. Perry. I don't repeat it. I don't. If I have to repeat it for you, you need to get a special education teacher. It's not that hard. I don't like you. You're a rejected fail. Men of power can get a date. They don't have to hold a woman at gunpoint. They don't have to peep. They don't have to hack. They don't have to stoop. They don't have to make themselves the butt of a dirty joke. And you have and you are. So... We have a witness that says, as long as I've known Mr. Perry, he trolls women. He puts cameras in their home when they're not there. He broadcasts them all over the dark web and makes money on watch time. He sells watch time. They don't know it. They don't know they're being watched. Then he gets them fired. Then he has the uh, he makes it where they can't find another job. Then he ha they lose their house, and then he has the ex take the kids away. Mr. Robertson, you have been recorded and recorded and recorded and recorded talking about well, you want me to leave Oklahoma. You and Charles both. What's it to you? Are you stalking me too? You're the one that messed with the mail, I understand. That's you. You did that. There's five of you. There's Josh Burson, Joe Chadwick, Charles Perry, David Robertson, and Matthew Powell. And I understand you're the one that messed with the mail to cause a delay. And you did it intentionally. And they recorded you talking about it. And so they had me put the receipt, Mr. Robertson, Mr. Perry, into the petition, the amended petition to the Supreme Court. We're going to deal with it. Do you not understand the words? Mr. Perry, I'm not going to talk to you. You're, you need to leave. You're, you know, you're asking me, what can I do to help you? Get out of my life. Rejected fail. Get out of my life. Get your cameras off me. Get out of my... Get out, get, put your fucking doll down. Take your skirt off and go act like a fucking man. And stop acting like a one-year-old little girl. A one-year-old little girl can sit on her, sit down and watch TV and play with a doll. That's the skill set you have. I'm not going to talk to you. You won't understand a word I'm saying, even if I did. What please happened? leave me alone. Please, what, what please God happened? bless you, but what please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please, stop following me. You won't call the cops stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no. why. You're as. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No. You're as idiot as that guy. Does I mean just the fact that you would ask me who's telling on me, and who's helping you, like you actually think I would answer the question? That speaks to how delusional wackadoo you are. Why would I help you with that, Mr. Perry? Why would I give you that information? 
I heard the recording after I f- we found out Michael Neely was drugged and he didn't kill anybody. You can't kill somebody when you're asleep and in respiratory distress and end up with an auto mark on you. You know, you got an investigation of your life going on right now and you don't get that. You seem not to get that, Mr. Perry. McNamara email, harassment email, Mike was drugged email, ringtone email. Put the receipt in the petition because they're going to fuck with the mail, sin. I want to get them when they do. Don't go to the courthouse. Mail it. It cost me twice as much to do it that way, just so you know. I've said this, and I'm repeating myself over and over and over and over. And we already said that David Robertson was up at the post office at the airport. We already said this. This is not new. Fucking with the mail. How would you know I was up at the airport? But for stalking. How would you, you know, what'd you do? See, that's a federal. Mail, messing with the mail, that's federal. You're in a lot of trouble. Mr. Perry, I'm not going to help you. And he'll type in my phone, what can I do to help you? Get out of my life. Get the fuck out of my life. So the witness says, he'll, um, he t- t- Mr. Perry is a um, sexual sadist. He likes hurting women, and then he goes, rubs one out when he gets them hysterical. And I'm, that's a quote from the witness, rubs one out. I'm not being lewd and lascivious. I'm quoting a witness who's really talking about crime causation, by the way. There's a lot of um, crimes that are sexual in nature. BTK was one. Actually, I just bought a book from an FBI profiler that overviews murder that are sexual in nature. Somebody kills somebody and they go and get some sort of sexual gratification out of it. I believe Ted Bundy was one of those. Uh, I know BTK was. You're not. You're that. So why would I talk to you, Mr. Perry? I've told you over and over and over and over. I have no need to help you. I have protection from you. I'm not going to take the knife out of your hand and slit my own throat with it. And you don't understand normal grown-up words people say to you because you keep doing the same thing every day that gets you caught. So why would I have a conversation with a nutbag that can't even understand what the hell I'm saying? I've had to say the same thing. Over and over and over that most people don't have to be told at all. And you don't get it. And when I say that, I don't mean I'm dropping hints for you. Why would I do that? You are delusional as it gets. I'm not dropping hints for you, sir. I can't stand you. You're nutty. You're disgusting. You're raping me. I'm a victim of your crime. And from what I understand, your guy said that. We've never had one do this. We've never had one of our victims of our crime figure out they were being watched, figure out we were causing the problems they were having, bill us, send us an invoice, and uh, solve the murders we were committing. Yeah, you're not dealing with normal. You, you picked a cop's daughter. I'm, I'm Chief Hall's granddaughter. You decided to go after police people. Most criminals are smart enough not to do that. That's like going to the uh, going going to a police department to try to steal the cocaine out of the evidence room. Not the smartest, not the brightest bulbs, is it? You guys are. I don't know. I guess you're used to taking a bag of money into a police department and giving here's the doing the same thing to them you're doing to me. Here's the bribe, or I'm gonna kill you. I'll hurt your family. I'll get you fired. That's what they do. It's threats and bribes. I get threatened with. Income loss, economic abuse, that's domestic violence. I get threatened with it every day. We're going to kill you. We're going to arrange a false arrest. Again, they carried that out once. So imagine how terrifying it is for me when they make that threat. I've learned how to uh, manage my fears. It's days, I, I, there's days I have to take a break from everything and just decompress. Because, I mean, do you, do you realize there's police all over the country talking about this? Going, oh my God in heaven, how the hell does she put one foot in front of the other? How the hell does she live like this? I can't even imagine. That's one tough chick. So, I have help, I have support, I have God, I have prayer. I have people that love me, that protect me. That's how. People in law enforcement from somewhere else. Because TPD did the wonderful thing of just giving my police report right over to the offender immediately after I filed the report. It's not how you do policing. So thank God I had some backup, right? Um, so, I mean, I guess you guys just do that. You, you walk into police de- department and here's the money or else. 
take the bribe or else. I'm threatened with death, false arrest, economic loss, property loss every fucking day. You got pictures of me, Perry? Okay, duly noted for the record. But we did say you're a stalker. So, of course, you would have pictures of me. You're weirdo. Stalking is a crime. Peeping is a crime. Hacking is a crime. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. Over and over and over. You guys are proving us out. Over and over and over and over, aren't you? You're, you're just, you'd like terrorizing people like this? I don't want to ever talk to you. I don't ever want to... Look what she says right here. He actually said, I don't care what you want. I'm going to force myself on you anyway. Mr. Perry, get your little dolly and walk into a bar and tell the ugliest chick in there what you do all day and see if she'll go out with you. You don't know how to get women to like you. We think you're not into women because if you like women, you do what women like. We think you got some serious mommy issues that you don't have the dignity to keep that within your own family. And you're bothering other people with it. You're bothering other families with it. You and David both. David, I get you're the mafia. I get it. I don't care. I lived in Vegas for a really long time. I had some friends that were in the mafia. David, they don't treat women like that. You're doing it wrong, man. You don't fuck with women and kids. You're crossing the line, man. I, I'm sorry that you, th you thought I was going to just, you know, cave. I don't cave, sir. I have help. I don't like you. I didn't come up here to pick a fight with you. No one did. You picked a fight. You're causing your own problems. All you had to do is leave me the fuck alone. So you want to be the mafia and you want to be this big guy walking in with your bag of money and you're going to go in and threaten everybody. You're going to do what I say or else. I've told you before. As it pertains to me and my family, set a meeting with your, do with your uh, lawyer. I'm happy to meet you down at his office and you make those threats to my face. Coward. You make those threats to my face. Okay, you and Calvin, whoever that is. How do I even know Calvin's name? His name comes up in recordings all the damn time. Charles, what is it? Who is Calvin to you? See, we want to know who Calvin is to you. What's your relationship with Calvin? You're supposed to be a Christian, Baptist deacon, happily married, state representative out of Texas. So how do you know Calvin and all these mafia guys in Tulsa? What are you doing hanging out with a mafia in Tulsa? Huh? We want to know that $25 million didn't cover up a damn thing, did it? You don't have a date. You have no chance of a date. And there's no fucking way I would tell you who's helping me. There's no fucking way. It's insane that you would even ask me. It speaks to your delusion that you would even ask that question. You are off your nut. So, I mean, it just, it just shows how mentally ill and mentally slow you really are. When you even ask the question. And as far as leaks go or wiretap, okay, let me tell you something. These guys get the information and they give it to me. How they get it, I have no idea. I'm not told that. And I've said that every day for ye years, Mr. Perry. There's no hints. Why would there be? The part that you're not picking up on is the cause and effect. When you mess with me, you get told on and caught. When you mess with me, you always get caught. When you mess with me, you get caught. Your own guy. We've never had one figure out she's being watched. Never had one figure out we're the ones causing the problems. Never been invoiced. Never been have one solve one of our murders. First time this ever happened. So you got to realize what you're dealing with here. And clearly none of y'all do. You're very slow. I don't have patience, but prepared to talk to people like you. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. You don't get the words. I, you know, I'm used to very smart people. They get it the first time I say it. I don't have to repeat it. And with you, every day, cause and effect. When you touch a hot stove, you get burned. When you fuck with me, you get told on and caught. Never happened like this in your life. And you're very slow that you can't get it by now. After I've said it over and over, a six-year-old could have got it the third time it happened. You guys get caught and you do it anyway. And then when things blow up, weren't you told... It's, I don't think it's very wise to use her family. She already knows you're talking to her family. Don't expect it to work out. Okay, but you didn't. And then you try it anyway. It doesn't work out. And then you, oh, it didn't work out. Okay, but everybody told you. We don't have the puppets and crayons for this. Go, to, go back to daycare and learn how to understand words. Look at this guy. Same thing with him. How many times did she say, leave me alone? He starts talking about her clothes. I don't care what you want. I'm going to force myself on you anyway. 
I don't care what you want. I'm going to force myself on you anyway. He's not getting a day with her. She's not going to start liking him because he's doing acting like that. We live in a civilized society where we have laws and rules. If everybody acted like you, we're done. We don't have one. And a society is defined by what we do with the monsters like you among us. We don't tolerate it. The Civil War, I'm not your slave. Whoever said that, we can't let her go. Oh, yes, you can. You can and you will. Or it's going to be done for you by these guys that tell me everything you're trying to do. It's going to be done for you. It's not up to you. I'm sorry you thought that. That, again, speaks to your delusion. Slavery ended at the Civil War era. Do you understand? When I'm quoting you verbatim every damn day, you honestly think it's up to you? Wow. Again... That's why we don't have a conversation. I don't speak with stupid people that don't get what I'm saying. You got to be able to understand the words. You clearly can't. You clearly can't keep up with everybody else. Mr. Perry, put the fucking doll down. Take your skirt off and go act like a man. You're an embarrassment to me. You're an embarrassment to me. Don't contact me at all. The more you do, the more we get. You're provoking the guys helping me. They get pissed off because you've been told repeatedly, don't contact me. Don't contact me. When you do it anyway, you get told on. We get more. How do we know who Calvin is? How do we even know that? How do we know it was David that fucked with the male? Because you won't leave me alone and my guys get pissed off. And boy, they work hard. We all want this wrapped up and y'all are gone. There's no more threat. There's no more hardship. There's no more suffering. I won't be peeped on. I won't be broke ever again. You guys take my money faster than I can make it. So this is what, you're do this is what you guys look like. Not hot guys, not sexy guys, no prince, not Prince Charming. Not like a ladies' man. You look like a fucking menace idiot. Trailer park trash. I can't control myself. I can't be normal. And I'm going to ick and slime that all over you. I'm going to ick my creepy, slimy, ick all over you. I have no control. That's what this guy's saying. Unless you leave me alone. Just... Please leave me alone. <laughs> It is illegal to stalk and harass. It is illegal to stalk and harass. It is a felony in Oklahoma. You know why? Because people don't like it when you do that. In a civilized society, we don't act like that. And if you do things people don't like, they're not going to like you. Mr. Perry, this is why I won't talk to you, because I've already said that. Most people never have to be told that, and yet y'all have to be told over and over and over and over, and it still didn't click. Boom, you're stupid. I don't have enough puppets and crayons for that, Mr. Perry. You got a little doll. You sit around on your fat, lazy ass, perverting around all day watching TV. You know, so can a one-year-old little girl. You've got the skill set of a one-year-old little girl. I don't have the patience or the time to talk to you. When you have no ability to keep up with what I'm saying or understand what's... You guys don't understand what's happening. When you get told on, why is that? When you get caught for the first time in your lives, nobody ever, nobody else knew they were being watched. Nobody else knew we were causing the problems. But I do. What does that mean? I know, We don't think you even understand what that means. That you're that mentally slow. It's embarrassing. I don't care. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please Shut leave me alone. Hey men, leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumb ass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way, okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior, and you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. That's okay. Leave me alone! Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to 
some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. It doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting. Dude. Okay, so we get information that you guys did bribe Tulsa Police, Creek County Sheriff's Department's public police, and uh, some of those guys put the money in evidence, and you didn't like that you didn't get your cover up, so you stole it back. You have it. You didn't lose shit. Is that true? It's unconfirmed. I don't know. I know you come at me with, I'll starve you into a lie. I'll starve you into a lie and a bribe. And I've said no. I'm not doing it. I'll starve first. You do that in a police department too? Are you the mafia? Didn't I, didn't I text you, Mr. Robertson, something about, I'm not a Wyatt Earp. I didn't come in town to mop up. Had you left me alone, you'd see that was true. But you picked a fight with the wrong people. This one, uh, are you winning it? You keep getting caught. You've never been invoiced before. You got an invoice. $1,000 a day for getting entertained what, with my body, my property, my utilities. Plus, $2,000 a day for doing it without my consent. Mr. Perry tells somebody she thinks we're a bunch of sex perverts. We're not. We're businessmen. Nope. No, sir. Absolutely not. Again, with the mental slow. Remember where I came from. I'm not from Podunk, you know, wherever you are. You know, your trailer park. I, I, not all people in a trailer park. Please let me d use that disclaimer. Not all people in a trailer park are trash. But some are. That is a reason there's a, that term is used trailer park trash and you're that no question you i grew up in the home of an elected official and the police chief your uh actions speak for who you are it, you're disgusting you're low life you're low class and uh so you know it you piss people off when you do things that are illegal people made that a law making it illegal because everybody doesn't like that when you do it and when you do it all the time, people pretty soon are going to start fighting against you. And that's where you're at on this. You pissed off all the wrong people. They're fighting against you. And that's why you're seeing things happen you've not seen before. Perry's, Perry's guy said that. When he pesters her and takes all our money, things do not go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before. Oh, gee. Okay, so laws, Mr. Perry, are in place so we have a civilized society. People got de and sat down and decided... We're not going to put up with that kind of shit. That's monster conduct right there. We're not going to put up with that kind of shit. Men watching women in the privacy of their home against their will. Or exploiting them. Sexual exploitation of women and children. Sir, that's child pornography. You did this all over the world. Internationally. You're in some trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. And no, I'm not going to help you. I want you stopped. I don't like being raped. I don't like starving. I don't like living like this. I'm, 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 I've made some decisions so that at the end of the day, we're all safe. Me, and I can look your other victims in the face and go, you're safe now. You're safe now. That resonates with me because I know what that feels like to not be safe and you're scared. You got to get, you gotta, work is a necessity. There wasn't, a, there's not a day that I work, you don't go at me. I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. I'm a victim of crime every time I just go to work. Work is a necessity. People aren't putting up with your actions. They're not. And they don't like you. Because when you do something that people don't like, that they made illegal, they're not going to like you. And these are things we all learned in daycare, sir. So no, I'm not going to talk to you. You won't understand a word I have to say anyway. You, I mean, I'm talking to you right now on a podcast. You don't understand a word I'm saying. Because I'll have to say the same thing all over again tomorrow. It won't click for you. It'll go right over your head. You're wasting my time. Two men here chimed in on this girl and said, this conduct is disgusting and inappropriate. And that's just two. She's got a shit ton of them. People that did a, um, you know, a, a video like this and said, this is not appropriate. 
this is disgusting. And he's not going to get a date. He's not Prince Charming. He's an asshole. By the way, she did get a restraining order against him, Mr. Perry. Restrain yourself. Restraining means restrain yourself. I moved twice. Only a few of my close friends knew that you were a peeper stalker. Okay? Only a couple knew. Most of them didn't live in Texas. They weren't your voters. People that don't live where you are don't give a shit about your politics any more than, uh, you know, for example, Chief Franklin cares about somebody over in Alaska. I promise you he's not wringing his hands at night wondering how some state, you know, state, state assemblyman over in um, Alaska is going to vote on any, any given bill. Doesn't give a shit. You don't matter. Get off your high horse. You don't matter. David, go down to the strip. Go down to the strip. Ask any of those people if they give a shit who you are. They don't. You can go over there and say, I'm, I'm Oklahoma Mafia. Okay. Anyways, whatever. I came here to, you know, I'm going, where's the next poker game? No one cares, sir. I didn't come in, out into this town to mop up. I came to get away from a fight. Four years, Mr. Perry had. Four, four, four years. From 2011 until 2013, I didn't say anything to anybody but your campaign guy. Make him stop. Make him stop. Somebody else is going to see him. Guess what? My friends did. How could they miss it? And then I got to explain to them. Otherwise, it would have just been people outside of Texas. I didn't want to be a scandal. I had two children. I didn't want to have to deal with that. With your bullshit. I can't keep my pants zipped up. And I'm a sex weirdo. Yeah, like we needed that. Jesus. Yeah, you got to build. No, you're not a businessman. Businessmen are smart enough to get a contract. So, fuck you. You have no idea what you're doing. You're not very smart. I have to repeat myself over and over and over and over. I'm a business person. One time, I worked with surgeons. One time. Boom, you get it. Boom, you get it. Boom, I got cops helping me. They don't have to repeat themselves, Mr. Perry. Nor do I. You need a special education teacher or something. This is very, this, this conduct is disgusting. When you're told on, that's the message being sent back to you. We're not okay with it. We're not okay with what you're doing. Stop. You're being stopped. So this bullshit of, oh, we can't let her go. Listen, you're told on more than ever in your lives. That is you being stopped. It's not up to you in case you missed that. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stopped me. That's no, why I'm no, no. Just talk leave me, me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave me alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Just, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, hey. I can't live here anymore because you stopped me. That's no, why I'm no, leaving. No. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what stop. Bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Just, please just, leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's why I'm leaving. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't what want to ever talk to you. What I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. Please what, stop. What bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please stop. Do you see this right here, Mr. Perry? From 2011 to 2013, only people that knew were those two. Until Cheryl started seeing stuff. And I had to tell her. And she moved to Houston. Nobody gives a fuck about your stupid little nothing elected position. You don't matter. It is hysterical that you think you do. You're not smart enough to keep up with a three-year-old, sir. I left in 2014. I've been gone for eight years. I've been gone for eight years. You do not legislate in Oklahoma. You don't legislate in Oklahoma. I left so there would be no fight. Four years, I kept my mouth shut. I've told my friends, only close friends knew. I didn't go to the media with it. That's why I'm fighting with Jordan. I didn't hurt him. I didn't go to the media with this. I went to you, so you'll make him stop. He can't restrain or control himself. He looks ridiculous. He goes around telling everybody, I'm a happily married man and a Christian Baptist deacon. Vote for me. Except he's going up behind women's homes, watching them in their backyard. Going to restaurants, sending staffers, sending his daughter everywhere I went. 
So no, something's wrong with that. It's called stalking. It is a crime in all 50 states. You're creepy. I left. I didn't want to be a scandal. I said that, Mr. Perry. I might even be here. Here's Cheryl. Your damn, you know, your damn staffer's coming to sit with us all the time. We didn't invite her. So I'm telling Cheryl, let's go to Starbucks when this is over because this is ridiculous. We did. And then, then I leave my house, forget my phone at home, went to run errands, come back. She's texting me, are you coming? And I'm like, no, I, I forgot. It was Wednesday. And we went every Wednesday with her church group to happy hour. It wasn't a church thing. It was just a social thing with people that went to our church. And uh, there's Catherine walking in. What the fuck? What in the fuck is this? So one night I forget my phone at home. I run errands. Cheryl calls me. Charles came walking in. Walked right back where I was sitting, shot me a dirty look and left. Wasn't eating there. He was looking for you. Wow, how would he know I left unless he had cameras in my home? Even if he's hacked me and GPS my phone, my phone's at home. I forgot it. You should think I'm at home. But for you're a peeping Tom. Also a crime and a disgusting sick one. So no, sir, you're not a businessman. You are a pervert. If you are business savvy, you anticipate civil and criminal liabilities and you protect yourself by signing a contract. You get consent from the other party. If you go into a strip club, they got fetish clubs, you can go peep to your heart's content. They'll do every weirdo thing you want. You can hire escorts in Vegas. Some of those chicks will do whatever weirdo thing you want. So, but you got to pay for it. It is not free. And you just want, you know, what's yours is yours and what's mine is, you know, that's your thing. What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Nope, sorry, that's not how that works. That's a great way to get everybody mad at you. You have a poverty mentality because if you have an abundance mentality, you feel and believe and see the world as a big place with enough for everybody. Every, there's enough to go around for everybody. God is a big God. He provides enough for all his people. And unless you have a poverty, if you're a poverty mentality, that's when you start taking things from other people that doesn't belong to you. My granny used to get really mad at us, taking us to the store. If it's not yours, don't touch it. Your hands don't need to be on it at all. It's tacky. My granny, the chief of police's wife, we had some decorum we had to display in our conduct, sir. She'd probably shoot me if she knew I would cuss, and my granddad probably would understand it. He cussed too. But my granny would be like, oh, that's tacky, don't say it. But I'll tell you what, we had to conduct ourselves with dignity and class and respect. We were the chief's grandkids. You don't have any idea what that's like, do you? You can tell. You can tell your trailer park trash. You're Jerry Springer. It's embarrassing to me. We don't care about your little bitty whatever dog catcher or something something that you are. No one gives a fuck. Do you understand? Write it down. I'm sick of repeating that. No one cares who you are, Mr. Perry. You don't legislate in my state. I don't live there. I've been gone for eight years. You don't matter. You never did. I was in politics all my life. I had a hundred people to call if I needed something. I didn't do Texas legislation. You didn't matter to me. I didn't live in your district. I could have called anybody that I'd been working for for years before I met you. You're a job. I've done more to stop your crime than anybody else you know. I'm not going to talk to you. You're not all there. You won't understand a word I say. You have zero ability to reason and logic. Because I've had to repeat the same thing over and over and over. And, and it's still not clicking for you. And you're asking me questions like, who's helping you? How, who's, 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 who's telling on us? I'm not told the leaks. I'm not told how they get the information. I'm not told that. Some it's leaks. Some it's wiretap orders. I don't know. I'm not giving that information. How many times have I repeated myself, Mr. Perry? You think I'm going to waste my time talking to you? I could go talk to a wall. Be the same thing, wouldn't it? You can't keep up with me. I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to waste my time. You see this here, Mr. Perry? You're still trying to do the same thing. So let's say Tulsa Police, Creek County Sheriff's Department, Sepulpa County Sheriff's Department, maybe Tulsa County too, I don't know. Maybe uh, they got the same thing. I'm going to throw her in jail and uh, until she does what I say. Do they? Do you tell all the cops? To, do you guys walk in, you mafia guys? I lived in Vegas. I knew mafia people. They don't act like you. They don't act anything at all like you. They don't mess with women and kids. 
So, David, I'm sorry that I came here and messed up your little mafia gig. You're not very good with it. You're, you'd suck at organized crime. You don't pick on women and kids. You don't pick on somebody affiliated with cops. And when you get caught a couple of times, you back the fuck off. You back the fuck off. And you're not smart enough to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Who to, who to pick a fight with, which battles to pick, you don't know any of that. You have no idea what you're doing. You can tell. You can tell. You're worried about me le you know, living here. I, like I told you before, I'm not Wyatt Earp. I did not come into town to mop up. I came into town to get away from a fight. You picked it. You picked it with the wrong people. I didn't, I, you know, I don't know who you are. I don't care. You are Calvin. Don't give a shit. You don't matter to me, except when you pick on me. Then all of a sudden you do. And then you picked, you don't just pick a fight with me. You're picking a fight with 40 police you can't get to. That's why it's a need to know. So there's not going to be a bag walking in to a police department and a threat and a bribe. You're going to take the bribe or we'll, th we'll hurt you like you do to me every fucking day. Nobody owes you a lie. You're not owed that. You're not owed that at all. And I don't waste my time having a conversation with somebody who's too stupid to understand what the fuck I'm saying. Mr. Perry, your skill set is that of a one-year-old little girl. Sitting around watching TV, playing with dolls and unicorns. It's pathetic. You are not Prince Charming. You are a monster. And yeah, I'm happy to be the one to stop your crime. I'm happy to be the one to be the first to bill you and to f solve one of the murders. You, I think I've solved more than one. I think I've solved more than one, haven't I? Mr. Perry, you need to shut the hell up. You sound like a fucking... I, I, don't, have, I don't have any words to, to explain how ridiculous you sound when you talk. It's embarrassing. It's, if only you understood how embarrassing it is. You sound exactly like that Neil guy. That embarrassing. Those two are not in love. He is not Prince Charming. You're off your nut if you think I would give you any information at all. I'm not, I'm not dead right now because they helped me. They protected me from you. If you want to do me a favor, get out of my life and don't ever contact me again. Or stop asking me what I need. What I need is you're gone. My goal is you're gone. I have my privacy back, my reputation back, and I will never be broke again. My goal is you're gone. You want to do something for me? Get out of my life and never contact me again. And frankly, that would be a good favor for you too. You're just not smart enough to put that together. Oh my God, you're so slow. This whole email dated October 29, 2015 says, he's trying to false arrest me to force me to lie. And then you did it. You've been trying again ever since because you fucked this one up. David, you suck at organized crime. I've never, I mean, oh my God. You guys get caught. It, it's... What does that say, Charles? I'm going to give you a second to read that. Because I know it, for you, 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 you're you slow. It'll probably take you, what, 30 minutes to read that email? You don't like me to read it to you? I don't want some big old scandal on this at all. But I do want him to go away and leave me completely alone. At this point, I'll do whatever I have to do to be free of him. He's your boy. Get him under control. Being What I meant by do whatever I have to do to be free is within the law. Whatever, What do I have to do within the law to get the guy off my back? Unwanted male attention. If you're in a bar, they kick your ass out. The bouncer will kick your ass out. Your skank, sorry. Ridiculous, oh my god, ass out. You see that? That's David. What do you want to know if I wear pantyhose or not? Jesus Christ. Wow. None of your business. Not your business. And yeah, there's places. Uh, you shouldn't know where I live. You shouldn't know where I work. You shouldn't care. The allegations are stalking. Mr. Perry, I don't live where you live. I moved twice to get away from you. Completely checked. Kept my mouth shut for four years about what you were doing to me, except for my closest friends, where I'm saying, if something happens to me, I need you guys to know I'm in some, I got a creeper on me. I got a fucking creeper on me. You know what Lucky and Mike and them, those guys in Manfred said? You know how many times I've pulled up at the home of a woman who's not my wife and watched her in the backyard? None. Never. It's weirdo. 
You know how many times I've sent my secretary to spy on a woman who is not my wife or even my wife? None. Never. You know how many times I've gone to a restaurant looking to spy on my wife or a woman who's not my wife? Never, because it's weirdo. You know how many times I've told a woman, you lose, you're stuck, you have no control? Or anyone who got in, you know, even if they had a had made a mistake? None. Ever. It's weirdo. You know how many times I've told someone, let your life fade away. I can't promise it will end without, stop, without death and destruction. None. Ever. It's weirdo. So why are they? And all of that is not what you do to pass a law in Texas. Mr. Perry, you're so mentally slow, you don't even know what your legislative duties are, do you? Not stalking women. Not stalking women. You got no chance of a date with me. You should know that. 12 years, you're a rejected fail. High school kids get rejected and move on. I've been rejected. I moved right along. Next. Mr. Perry, put the fucking doll down. Take your skirt off. Wipe the lipstick off your face. Quit acting like a little girl drama queen. And go do manly stuff, please. You're pissing us off. You're pissing us off. And so because you wouldn't, and you pester me and pester me and pester me and type in my phone. We got pictures of you. Uh-huh. I, yes, I, I did say you're stalking me. Did I not? I did say that. Did I not? I'm not. You know what? I don't have pictures of you. So, what? you know, fuck you with that. Then we got all this. David's the one. I want her to leave Oklahoma. She's messing up my crime. I'm not getting away with my crime like I used to. Wah. You got your passy and your blanky out too? Mafia guy? Please act like a grown man. Leave me alone. And then you probably won't have some pro the problems you're having. You too, Charles. You guys are pathetic. I didn't invite you in my life. You're intruders, not invited guests. You don't like getting kicked back? I'm kicking you off me. I didn't come up here to talk to you, David, or know you, or meet you, or have anything to do at all with you. You came to my work... You introduced yourself as Charles Perry's proxy stalker. You threatened me. Recant your claims he's stalking you or I'll put you in the lake. Wow, I didn't go where you were, sir. I didn't give you arsenic. This is on you. You act like a man about it. You want to threaten me? Do it to my face. Do it to my face. So there's a timeline. I'm going to go over here in just a minute. But because Mr. Perry will not shut up and get out, we got more today. That happens every day because we're all pissed about it. We're all fucking pissed about it. And Perry, I'm no, I'm not telling you who's helping me, and I don't know how they get the information from you and get it to me. Sometimes there's a wiretap order. Sometimes there's a leak. The leaks are not my information. I don't have that, and I've said that over and over and over and over and over. What I can tell you is everybody's sick and tired of you, all of you, sick and tired of you. Get the fuck out of my life. You broke into my home. You ripped up everything. You're sitting on top of me trying to rape me, and I'm kicking you off. If you don't like getting kicked off, get up and get out. David, I'm not Wyatt Earp coming in to mop up. But you pick a fight with me, you're going to get one back. And you don't know who I know, and you don't know what I can, you know. You've seen what I can do, but you don't know who I am, and you don't know who I know. But you're seeing things happen you've not seen before, right? Calvin, you too. I don't know you. I don't have a beef with you. You picked a fight with me. I have protection. That's it. That's all there is to it. If you think you can't let go, I'm sorry, but there's somebody else involved in this that you're going to have to answer to. It's not up to you, or we wouldn't have this. It's like this every day. McNamara email, and all the way to today. David's the one that fucked with mail. I've sa I said that... Uh, Gosh, I think I said that in a podcast. Maybe the day after he did it. Might have been the day after he did it. I mean, that's not new news. I said that a long time ago. They're watching everything you guys do to protect me. You're dangerous. You're dangerous, and you're a danger to me. You've caused me a whole lot of problems. You pissed off all the wrong people. People with power. Power enough to get me the Fabian puzzle in jail, Perry. Your name's not on that. You're too girled up. You're not Prince Charming. You're making everybody sick at their stomach. You disturb people so they talk. Some of them are telling on you. You do have leaks. We don't have any. 
We don't go around hurting people and disturbing everybody, making everybody barf. You got people going, oh my god, how the hell does she live with this? And our guys are like, she's tough. And we pray with her. And we support her. And we make her laugh. And we watch her back. We got her back. We got Mike Neely's back too. He doesn't know who they are, but they got his back. He didn't need to know that. This is very specific to me, David. I got this in jail. Calvin, I got that in jail. Right up under Charles's nose. His name's not on that. Fabian's name's on that. Remember, David and I, we, we, you and I talked about Fabian? Remember I told you? You asked me, why don't you like Charles? And I said, oh, well, there's that whole Fabian thing. He's a weirdo. He's a sex weirdo. There's nothing to like about him. He's a, man, he's a cruel man. I don't like that. That's not my thing. He's a sexual sadist. He gets off on hurting people. That's not my thing. And on that whole thing with Fabian, and you said to me, Fabian doesn't want you. I said, yep, yeah, you're not his spokesperson. I got to hear that from him. He's had a lot of times where he could have told me that, and he never did. He could have even given me a blow-off line. I'm seeing someone. Me, we say that. Girls say that for sure. Guys do too. You know, if you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, you oh, I'm seeing someone. Doesn't mean you really are. It's just, you know, it's a blow-off line. Okay, well, he, could, he had plenty. He had, a, you know, years to tell me that, and he never did. He's not even a blow-off line. So that's between me and Fabian, and you're butting in like this thing here depicts. Charles is the me, selfish little butt-in. He's not wanted. He's just wannabe butt-in. And uh, then you said, well, he just wants to fuck you. And I said, okay, then let us fucking be done with this whole thing. And then you said, actually, the two men fought over you for a long time. Uh-huh, and... It's not a fight. That's not a choice or a decision between Charles and Fabian. That's my choice. I don't pick Charles. I pick Fabian. Those chicks at Lady Godiva's don't like you, David, because you're creepy. And a lot of girls in those strip clubs can handle creepy as long as you pay up. You don't pay up. They complained about it in the back all the time. Oh, that guy's back. And then that one chick asked me, why is he uh, coming in here and telling us we have to make you like him? It's not our job. That's his job. If he can't attract you, then, you know, it's not my problem. Inept. Socially and mentally and emotionally inept. Big time. She goes, he told us if we couldn't make you like him, we're just supposed to find some way to uh, give them information that, would, that they could use to arrest you. And he's going to have you arrested again, and you're going to sit there in jail until you decide you like him. You told Fabian the same thing, Mr. Perry, you were recorded. I will find a way to lock her up. And she's not getting out this time unless she's with me. You need to give up. You were recorded, Mr. Perry. What courtroom has that already been played in? I promise you it has. What courtroom have these recordings of you guys already been played in? Because sometimes if you're talking to somebody, if there's not a wiretap order on them already, or a leak an informant or something around that person already? You think they're not going to go get one? Absolutely, they're going to go get one. Don't you know how this works? You guys need to watch Deep Cover on Netflix and, you know, some of these other... That's a true... That's a documentary. I mean, that's not a make-up, make-believe fantasy show. That's a... Um, it's hosted by Joe Pistone. He was Donnie Brasco. And they, they talk about a lot of that stuff on there, how they do undercover sting ops. You, as good as I am at it, he's, they're better. My guys are better, a lot better. And I'm pretty fucking good at it. If you have to ask, this is the first time anybody's ever figured it out. We're watching them. Let me tell you something. I learned how, I was trained, how to watch for people's subconscious slip-ups. And I'm very good at it. And you guys have said that. Make sure you don't slip up. She'll catch it. I was trained for that, Mr. Perry, Mr. P Mr. Robertson, Calvin. Who trained me? Who showed, I mean, my dad showed me how to do some sting hopping, but... Not like this. Not like I've had to do in interacting with, having to deal with y'all. I'm very good at it. Very, very, very good at it. And you know that. Yeah, Travis Myers asked me if I'm a cop. What do you do for a living, Ms. Ortiz? Adult entertainment? Are you a cop? Are you in law enforcement? Wow, didn't I just say, Mr. Myers, that I am a adult entertainer? There's one right there. There was one right there. That was one right there, wasn't it? Yep, okay. He's the Florida State's attorney, by the way.
Look at that, David. Look at that, Charles. Look at that, Calvin. You really think I'd give a fuck about some little bitty podunk small town? 3% of the dis of the population of the state of Texas is his district. Nothing new guy. After I've been through th around this. I mean, I'd worked in politics in Texas for three years. Uh, campaigns for state board of education. Not the same thing as um, state legislature. It's not. There's no laws passed. It's resolutions are passed for to to uh, dictate what happens in the textbooks. That's it. And uh, helping people get elected. But as far as government reform initiatives go, I worked federal, not state. Primarily, now in like 2012, after those Facebook messages, I worked on a child abuse initiative in New Mexico, not Texas. You don't legislate in New Mexico. You don't legislate in uh, Oklahoma. You seem very unclear as to what your legislative duties are, Mr. Perry. It's not creeping on women. That is not what men do or women do to pass laws, sir. You're breaking laws already in place. I'm around these guys, these people, Harry Reid, John Ensign. Harry Reid was the one of the most powerful men in Washington, D.C. He was, by the way, Mormon and pro-life and pro-gun rights. So, I mean, d get off your high horse, sir. You truly don't matter politically. It's, um, it's, has, it's, this is why I won't talk to you. You, no ability. You're completely disconnected from fact and can't tell the difference between fact and fiction. Completely disconnected from all reality. Because you sit around all day and you're fat, lazy ass, daydreaming. You can't pull yourself out of it, can you? You're stuck there, aren't you? I don't talk to people that I have to say it more than once. This was my granddad. Look, his, oh gosh, his name is on the front door. I've been through this. I've been over this. His name is right there on the front door of that police department. Mr. Perry where he was the chief of police. He did this affidavit. It's all over there. It's all over everywhere. That thing's a famous event that happened in our country. Unexplained situation there. Um, this was my granddad's. It was written about in this magazine. They solved a murder. Gas station attendant. They solved a murder. Yeah, I grew up in that. Yeah, so I can solve murders too, actually. I've solved a couple of yours. There's his name right there on the wall of the police police department where he served as chief. Chief, Mr. Perry. He wasn't just any cop. He was the fucking chief. Grew up in that. And he ran for county treasurer. And, uh, well, first he was appointed. He finished out somebody else's term. Then he ran and won. And his, uh, you know, this tells, there's a guy on here uh, that, let's call him at Mullen. That guy worked for uh, George W. Bush, George the son. He uh, committed suicide, not because he was crazy, but because he was dying of bone cancer and in some, some serious, serious, serious pain. And um, there's actually been several people that had that kind of cancer that ended up killing themselves. They couldn't handle the pain anymore. So, unfortunately, Colin McMullen, he had some power. He died of cancer. He um, actually died of cancer. I guess you could say he had. He was in so much pain. He, he ended up killing himself. Um, so I mean, come on with this. What do you think you're fucking with here, Mr. Perry? You think you matter? You and your doll. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm gonna waste my time with you. All right, so let me do the disclaimer real quick because I think I forgot. You allegedly, nobody's been convicted in a court of law just yet. Apply the but for standard. We do this to document Mr. Perry and Mr. Robbins and all their, you know, all their fucking stock and crap. Illegal activity directed at me. We're documenting it for court. We all want you in jail. A lot of people are working very hard to make that happen, to put a stop to your crime. Because what we believe is that you relieve suffering caused by crime. You don't cause it. Charles, you're just creepy, man. You're a creepy motherfucker. And apply the reasonable, prudent, individual standard. I'm doing the same thing the TikTok girl's doing. She's documenting the kind of stalking her stalker's doing. I'm documenting the kind of stalking you do. You have more money, you do more weird stuff. That's all there is to it, right there. And uh, I assert all my constitutional rights. 14th Amendment. Equal protection. Title 18 of the United States Code 1512, 1513 prohibits what you're doing to me, David. Trying to get me out of Oklahoma. 
Why don't you set a meeting with Mr. McGill and say that to my face? Say it to my face. Then explain why the hell I should move. You are the one that picked the fight, not me. All I asked you to do is leave me the fuck alone. Wherever I live, these guys helping me are going to put you in jail. That's all there is to it. It's a big, 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 big case. It's international crime. You know, there's like international laws and shit. It takes a while. So, this was the false arrest. I tried to get a protective order. May, two, May 2015, it's denied because I forget my police report. Look at the last sentence. You must file a complaint with police. David says, yes, he's, he's um, giving me arsenic. I was getting sick. Right? We're going to go over this again real quick because y'all forget things. What does that say here? I'm going to set it down and let you read it. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute because Perry's slow. It'll take him a while. The date is 1416. You got pictures of me. Okay. This is my police report dated 121 2016. And, and I'm telling uh, I, Mr. Robertson, it made customers creeped out. Customers sitting with me complained to the waitress. The waitress blew it off like it was, yeah, whatever. The guy got pissed off. He goes, I can't believe she just discounted me like that. What are they going to do? Wait till he blows your head off and then do something? So I went to talk to Mr. Chadwick. I'm trying to balance this, Mr. Chadwick, of when am I supposed to ignore when are they trying to provoke a reaction, and when do I do something? So right now, I think, since I'm in a room full of people, the best thing to do is just ask them to stop. Mr. Robertson was actually asked to leave. I was told he did something to another person that they didn't, they didn't want, they didn't like. So it, the actual reason he was thrown out of the club was, uh, I think it was a, a, commu, a, a combu, uh, accumulation of things. I, I don't know. All I know is I asked Mr. Chadwick, let's, here's what I'm faced with, Mr. Chadwick. When you're being stalked, there are certain things they're trying to provoke a reaction and you want to ignore it. Look at Dr. Russell, what she said, ignore it. Sometimes they escalate until you, you can't. So right now, just tell him to stop. That he's making customers uncomfortable. Just ask him to stop. End up, he, he's thrown out. That is what happened. Actually, that was on like the 16th. So it was after that. That had this, when I sent that, this hadn't even happened yet. So there's a video in that place. There's a video surveillance all over the place. I filed the report. I, I'm, I, I'm told a detective will put, will put it in the computer. A detective will be assigned and then call you. You'll need to come in and give evidence like the video and the text. But instead what happens is I'm arrested and charged with filing a false police report in retaliation for a public servant doing his job. Didn't give a shit about your politics. Didn't need you. Didn't give a fuck about you. Didn't discuss it with anybody. Didn't tell anybody at all. There's no texts. There's no tweets. There's no Facebook messages where I'm upset with Mr. Perry about anything political. Everything is about stalking from 2011. So Judge Hansen that signed that Judge Hanson that signed that, there's question as to did he just trust you and he shouldn't have, or is he, is he on the take too? There's too many improprieties in judicial proceedings, Mr. Perry, that have flagged off people, including this latest one. And I'll get into that in just a minute, but you already know, David went up and told them, you know, did the mail, messed with my mail, didn't he, to intentionally cause a delay. That's illegal. You're getting caught because you're messing with me, David. Perry, I, you shut the hell up. Were you asked what you think? Nope. No one cares. You know what everybody's pissed off at you for? Breaking the law. Of violating me. Get off me. You're making people feel creeped out, disturbed, upset, anxious, stressed out, f afraid, sad. And so, it's not that hard to get information. Everybody wants you stopped. Mr. Whoever said, we can't just let her go. It's not up to you, sir. This is a free country. Slavery ended at the Civil War. You need to keep up. Get off Noah's Ark, please. We don't put up with misogyny either or gender discrimination. Get off me. You're raping me. I said get off. That's all there is to it. You're getting kicked off. If you don't like that, get off me and walk. get out of my house. Get off me. Because as long as you're on me, I'm going to kick. And I'm going to kick you hard. Harder than you've been kicked before, from what I understand. So, 
First, there's two things that Mr. Um, Judge Hansen should have asked for. Proof that a police investigation, that evidence was collected, a police investigation was done, and what the, was there a determination? Was the uh, fall, true or false? None of that happened because you obstructed justice, you destroyed my evidence, and you committed perjury because you knew there wasn't a political vendetta. We're still waiting to see. Did you boldface lie or did you imagine it like you imagine peeping is a romance? Which one is it, sir? You need to tell. You, you went into court and you swore under oath, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Five years minimum per count. Right? Five years minimum per count when you lie. And you, you willfully concealed material facts. And so like 16, 13, 18, Title 18 of the United States Code 1001 and I think 1623 or something. U.S. versus Strom, U.S. versus Freeland. Concealment of a material fact is perjury. If it is substantive, and substantive enough to change the outcome. Well, guess what? Did Judge Hansen know by law I have to file a police report when I'm going to get a stalking order? And that I he, that you knew that because my first one was denied because I forgot it. And that maybe I wanted a police determination too before I went down and did that. Did you obstruct justice? And guess what? I got never tested ever. My blood was never tested to see was it arsenic? Was it phenobarbital? What was it? And how much was given it to me and who gave it to me? That indicates you did it. Because if I wasn't, if you weren't poisoning me, Mr. Perry, you would have made sure I was tested. You would have held your drama queen press conference. And you would have been, oh, look, see, she lied. Everybody feels sorry for me. I'm a victim. But you didn't do that. You made sure I was not tested. Destruction of evidence is in and of itself evidence, Mr. Perry and Mr. Robertson. Yeah, yeah I don't know. So he should have asked those questions before he just signed off on an arrest uh, thing. First, pro probable cause. You can't put somebody in jail without probable cause, Mr. Powell. It's against ABA rules. I've read them. I'm studying now in my ethics class in college. Probable cause means you have to have reason to believe somebody committed a crime. To believe somebody committed this crime, there would first have to be evidence that there was evidence collected properly, a police investigation and a police determination made in the jurisdiction where the crime occurred. And I need proof that there's a political reason for it. And there was none of that. There was no probable cause ever. And then once you arrest somebody, you got it's your job to preserve the evidence which you didn't bother to do. Because you had no intention to go under trial. It's a Brady violation. So what you did, this is when I got the call back. I'm arrested on the 29th. The, the police reports filed on the 21st, about a week. And guess when they call me back? Oh, 15th. We want your evidence. Meaning they didn't have it. If you wish to pursue charges, call me back. Right? Jesus. And there's the dismissal in my favor. So. That's what they got sued for. And they keep going around buying judges and causing mail delays and, you know, getting in my wallet so that uh, when I'm supposed to send something out, you know, service or, or make copies or, oh, let's make sure she doesn't have the money. Lucky got mad at y'all for that. Lucky Miller, Chief Miller in Manford, he told me. Get your hands out of her wallet. That terminology came from him. We all use it now like crazy. It's great. We said, you know, he's taking my money. He's a, you know, my guy calls it grand larceny with intent to coerce. Is that what you're doing to the police? You're walking into Tulsa Police Department or Creek County Sheriff's Department or Sepulpa Police Department with your little bag? You're going to do what we say or else. And here's the money. Is that what you do? Some of them put it into evidence. You didn't like that you didn't get your cover up, so you had it stolen back, and you have it back. $25 million? Somewhere in that. You, so it, you know, is that what happened? We don't know. You tell us. Why don't you tell us? You want to talk? tell us that okay so they wanted me to lie because they knew they fucked all that up i said yeah nope not gonna happen i just got my mugshot sh smeared everywhere i lost my home my child is to go to school and explain what the hell happened my family does too thanks for that i'm not lying for you 
one 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 condition what I'll do is just not say anything if Mr. Perry never contacts me again. And he did, second I got home. But that's what that says. Why else would this be here? He's admitted guilt and agreed to stop. Charles Perry may not contact Cynthia, is what that says. Quid pro quo, Mr. Powell. That's what that is. Do you not under, you know, you slow too? I mean, that's a pretty quo. Quid pro quo. Why else would Charles Perry's name be on that that says he can't contact me? So what I did is I turned around and sued for breach of contract. I followed the terms until I had to document what they were doing to me. And so, uh, if you want to call that a contact, uh, but actually as Oklahoma law turns out, if you're in jail, it says specifically, if you're under duress, the contract is, no, is you're not bound to it. And um, you're not bound to the contract if you're in jail. That's one of the way, reasons you can be um, under duress. Mr. Perry um, had my claim thrown out under res judicata with a phone call. We never had a hearing or a determination as to whether or not this was a contract when I sued him for breach of contract. Yep. So we didn't have any hearings at all in that one. There's a lot. That's starting to raise flags, you guys. I know you're slow, and I've already said this, and you're still not getting it. People are questioning why I'm never in court. I sue you. Burdens of proof is on me, and I'm never in court. You always keep me out. Five seasoned attorneys, and I've not been to law school, and you, you never let me in there. Too many ex parte hearings. Listen, people don't like corruption. It puts a sour taste in everyone's mouth. Mr. Perry, nobody cares how you feel. You really got to shut up. You really, really got to shut up. No one cares how you feel. They don't care what you think. You're not asked, are you? You're getting told on because people don't like what you're doing. You got to be able to put that together without me having to say it over and over and over and over and over. So I'm not going to waste my time talking to somebody that doesn't get that at this point. 12 years into this, there's no date. You're just told on all the time because you're making everybody upset. You're making every, everybody else upset. Normal people don't like to watch one person cause hardship for another. And that's all you guys do all day long. So. Res judicata, in order to have that, there has to be a prior lawsuit filed on that issue somewhere before, and a jury trial and a verdict already given, granted, some, one way or the other. And the person, instead of appealing it, or maybe they exhausted appeals, didn't like that answer, so they tried to sue again on the same thing. This was not addressed in any other prior lawsuit, and there was no trial, no on anything. Again, lots of ex parte hearings where I wasn't there. No judge saw any of my evidence. This one, a phone call. Judge Egan got a phone call. You want it dismissed? Okay, sure. I file a <gasps> appeal to the 10th. The 10th did the same thing. We understand the 10th, the, the three judges that made that decision never even saw it. You paid off a law clerk. That's why it says it's not to set precedence. You bought a law clerk that did it. The three judges never saw it. $25 million. Wow. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Hey, men. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and con continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please Dad, leave me alone. Please leave, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes, and I'll leave you alone. Oh God! Just it's too damn early for this shit. Quiet. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm curious. Sir, what, please what leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. I don't. Okay, so Perry wants to talk. Why?
because I'm going to repeat myself again, leave me alone. You mistake, leave me alone sounds nothing like pester and pester and take my money, pester and pester and take my money. Pester and pester and we've got photos of you. I'm happy we got evidence against you. I'm ha For what? I don't commit a crime. You've, been, you've tried to get or do a false arrest about six times now, haven't you? Or more? You tried Caitlin Arquette's. I wasn't there. Didn't see anything. You you alleged there was my cigarette butts were there, my gum was there. Yep, but I didn't smoke them, and the gun gum that I chew now wasn't made back then. The incidentals on my hands are different now than they would have been back then. You cut yourself. I've definitely cut myself and burned myself since then many times, and I've never held a gun, never fired a discharge on a firearm ever. Then the next one was drug trafficking. Have the drug dealer tell her to. Ask the cop if he wants to buy drugs. That's drug trafficking. I, I, I didn't take the bait. Get her on her shoes or she does a lap dance with her socks on. Dear God. Wow, that's just terrible. Mr. Perry sends a guy in to ask me if I will sleep with him or be creeped out by him for a couple of hours for five grand. That's prostitution. Not doing a lap dance with my socks on so that I don't poke holes in the furniture. Everybody does it. You're going to selectively prosecute me? The harassment email. Send her home. Harass the hell out of her. Do things like have her mail all fucked up. Forward it to my house without her consent or knowing about it. She'll just wonder why she's not getting her bank cards and her money. Right? Um, why they have to send them out four and five times and I still don't have it. You uh, you know, things like that. We'll vandalize her car. Do shit like that. And, um, over and over and over and over and over. I've had like Four car accidents in two years. Somebody hit me. They always go for the tire. They always go for the wheel. Every time. So then they then they, then they start, oh, maybe people are starting to notice that. Maybe we'll have someone pull out in front of her. Then she hits them. That was recorded, by the way. So then you tried, uh, you know, you tried uh, the jewelry, have Terry give her auction jewelry, and then starve her to death, make sure she can't make any money. This is all coercion and entrapment, right? I'm not, these are things that you're trying to push me to do that I wouldn't do on my own, right? We're going to harass the hell out of her. And then when she says that she, when she tells on us, we'll say she's harassing us. And you did it twice in civil court, twice. So don't say you didn't have that plan. Every inmate in, uh, that I was in jail with in uh, Lubbock was pissed about it. They told me what you were going to do. Because I guess Matt Powell mentioned it to a d defense attorney and those defense attorneys told their clients I was in jail with all their clients. They all told me. Everyone knew about it. Guess what else? In Lubbock, if something happens at 8, by 8, 11, it's all over town. You don't think that's all over town by now? I think it is. Who do you think you're fooling? I don't think you're fooling anyone. I think people are fooling you. I think that you're just not that smart. I think that when people act like they believe you, it's so that you'll shut up and go away because you're they're kind of like me. I, I can say words. He won't understand them. So why waste my time? I'm going to shake my head and act like, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds good and walk off because I don't have time to waste with this. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to stand there and argue with him while he lies to me. There are reporters that have said that, Mr. Perry. One of them was she hit her desk over and over and over. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I looked through everything that girl has. Not one place did she say, I don't want him to get elected. Everything she says, leave me alone. That guy lied to me and I won't take his phone calls anymore. Who do you think you're fooling? Nobody. People are fooling you. You're not wasting their time. They're like me. I don't want to talk to you. Because look what she said. Leave me alone. Six times. And what did he say? He starts commenting on her clothes. He was not asked, was he? No one cares what he thinks. No one cares what you think. You're not asked. And what part of leave me alone did you not get? And if you're that slow that it's said that many times and you still don't get it, you're not getting any more of my time. So you have people telling you what you want to hear so that you'll shut up and get out of their face. They have other shit to do. They don't have time to sit there and listen to you lie. And you think you are off your nut if you think people don't believe you off your nut definitely delusional same as when you ask me who told and who's helping you like you actually think I would give you that information I have protection against what you're trying to do to me I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna uh, do something that would jeopardize that mr. Perry genius duh 
You're off. You're not. You've fallen down and smacked your head on the pavement, haven't you? Did you have a stroke or something? Do you have Alzheimer's? Do you have senile dementia? That you would come up with this shit? It's bizarre. Bizarre thinking. So I'm sorry, but other people look at you like this. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. What? Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. What? Sir, please what leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. I don't want fruit for this. Please Step leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. What, Sir, please what, leave. What you Perry, your little doll getting you a date, your little one-year-old little girl act getting you a date, a real love life date. Nope. It's getting you told on more than ever in your life. Let's all do the same thing yesterday that didn't work. Pissed everybody off. Got us caught. Jesus, that's why I won't talk to you. Now, anybody can see the whole police report here. This is the one I'm going to have her car told and sold before she figures out it's not even legal. That was on August 23rd, 2019. When Lucky came to talk to me at my work, Mr. Perry, Mr. Prow, uh, Robertson, here's the harassment email. Dated 4-11-2018. He's going to send me home, harass the shit out of me, and then when I tell on him, he's going to say I'm harassing him. He's going to lie, again, in court, under oath. Five years minimum per count, Mr. Perry. Yep. I document this shit. Uh, so, these are the texts with, between me and Fabian. I told him the night David came in, August, October 12, 2015. Here's what this weird guy said to me. It's not between you and Charles. It's between me and you. It's my choice. I choose, and it's not going to be Charles, ever. Charles is weirdo. I don't do weirdo. This is what Dr. Russell said. In summary, I found Ms. Ortiz to be intelligent, articulate, and honest individual, focused on her legal case and what she sees as Mr. Perry's interference in her life. Rape. I did not invite you up here. I didn't invite, I don't want you in my life. You're not an invited guest. You're an intruder, Mr. Perry. And when you started doing that to me, because you're a serial. This is not your first rodeo. You've done this before. You don't try to murder somebody with arsenic right after they've just tried to get a protective order against you. You're top of the list of suspects. Charles, put the doll down. Take your skirt off and act like a man. Get over it and move on. No one cares what you think you weren't asked. Conduct yourself with some dignity. If you can, do you have that kind of power? I've been around men of power. They can get a real date. You can't. 12 years of rejection. I don't like you. Get over it and move on. Quit being so disconnected from reality. Here's the other thing. You guys don't have any empathy, and normal people do. So you're void of normal human emotions. You don't factor that into anything you do. It's like trying to run a race with no feet, and everybody else has feet. That makes it really easy for us to get information. Two cops, August 2015. Mr. Perry came and uh, wanted us to just find a way to false arrest you. We said, no, that's not why we signed up to be cops. But you need to watch yourself. That doesn't mean he won't find some that will. I wrote the U.S. attorney about it. It was received in uh, just a few days, on the 27th of August 2015. So this has been documented for a long time. You've been trying to do that, sir. You don't use the criminal justice system to subjugate a woman who doesn't like you or to try to get a date. That's not how you get a date. You don't use the criminal justice system. You're abusing power. You're corrupt. People don't like corruption, sir. It's not that hard to get information. You are, you know, you don't, you, you're something. So uh, then, of course, we had the, okay, these, real quick. Mr. Perry started s spreading rumors that he and I were having an affair. And I'm like, oh my God, no, 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 no. That is not happening. It got to my client. I was pissed. So I'm asking them, did your peep did your people, Carl Carl and Robin Tepper, get mouth you know, tell something to Chris Wynn, who told my client, Frank Morrison. I was running a 
County Tre Frank Morrison was my client for County Treasurer. By the way, we went in to talk to Matt Powell's people. Um, they contacted us. I didn't know them. They called us. They were miffed off about some kind of change in the insurance plan, and uh, Lubbock County had one of the lowest pay scales for ADAs in the state. The guy pulled out a chart and showed me. I would, I, if I could leave my, you know, I have my parents live here, my family's here. If there was any way at all I could move to this one over here, I'd make a whole lot more money. So they talked to us about that. They wanted a raise. They wanted the insurance um, situation resolved. So I was in that office quite a bit, actually, during that time. Mr. Um, uh, Powell calls up to somebody here, maybe Mike Neely, I don't know, and said, can we just get Mr. Morrison to say that uh, Cynthia misunderstood him? And he goes, well, you could, but I don't think that lie will work, Mr. Powell. Because uh, every, he doesn't, Charles doesn't ask Cynthia why she's pissed off, which means he already knew. He never denies spreading rumors of an affair. He denies having employees. Everyone knew he had employees. In fact, she names them. So, yeah, you guys suck at the organized crime thing. This is um, where Mr. Perry tells me, I'm asking him about my taxes. Look at the end here. You lose. You're stuck. You have no control. Wow, okay. That's what um, those guys in Manford said. When, I, when I've had a client that you make some, even if they make a mistake, you know how many times I've said you're stuck, you have no control, you lose? Never, because it's weirdo. That's what a stalker says. Yeah. Uh, this was Mr. Perry. This was the policy. I helped him get elected. He considered me a bright spot in his campaign and then goes into a court of law and lies and says there was a political vendetta. See, where's the emails about a political vendetta? There aren't any, especially, uh, let's see, Golly. this is all stalking, Mr. Perry. The rest of them are here. I was looking for the computer one. I think it's under the computer one. Hacking. Try to send out, when I'm in jail and they're telling me, he's going to uh, claim you're harassing him, he's going to harass you. And he's going to tweet from your phone, get rid of your phone. I did, immediately. Disconnected it immediately. Got a new phone. I'm in Manford at this moment. When these were sent, my family was all back in the way back at about a thousand feet from the house, sitting talking with some friends out on the back of their property. And my son and I go, let's go get some. Let's go to the store and get some food. So we'd already eaten dinner. We wanted some snacks. So we drive into Manford, and um, we're trying to decide where to go. And and we were gonna pass the Jiffy Trip. And at the, at the last minute, my, go, my son goes, oh, go ahead and go there. So I made a, I was in the left-hand lane. There's nobody around but one car. All you could see was the headlights, and it was a cop. So I turned right from the left-hand lane, and here comes the cop pulling me over. And I'm like, shit, this is the last thing I need right now. And, uh, I mean, I had just gotten home from jail. I had my new phone with me. This one was at the house. I was charging it up to box it up and send it back to my ex-husband. Or, I'm sorry, to Ted. Ted and Philip. It's evidence. I kept telling him I'm hacked. He's hacked me. He sees every fucking thing I do. Actually, we found out later he, he, it was cloned. My phone was cloned. It's a different. So you can run a test on my phone. It's not going to show up anything. It's going to show up on his phone. Yep. Um, so, anyways, um, he tried to text from the phone, not realizing that it was disconnected. While I'm in Manford, getting pulled over by a cop. Maybe Mike Neely. I don't even know. Um, that, like, he didn't do anything. I mean, he just shined his light and goes, uh, you don't have any, you know, drugs or anything in here in your car? No. And then he looked at my son. He goes, who are you? And he goes, I'm her son. Okay. Well, I got another call. You don't do that again. That, you know, he ex asked me to explain what I did. So I did. I showed him my bond condition. I go, when you run my, t my, uh, my license, this is going to come up. And by the way, that guy is still bothering me and he's not supposed to. And he goes, uh, don't give anybody your address. Use a fake address. Took off. Left. Um, yeah, because I'm being stalked. And uh, this jammed up my computer like he does now. When I'm trying to work for Uber Eats or something, uh, he'll jam up the app so I can't make any money. Because you need, you need money to make copies and mail um, court documents. Right? Okay. So I'm telling him, stop. Look at the date on that. This is how long this has been going on. I'm telling him, stop. And uh, he called me. First of all, we've been texting forever. 
this other phone, this was a new phone. After that, those other texts I just showed you where, you know, they're, can we say Frank just, you know, she just misunderstood something Frank said. That's a login. That that was a login to my computer, my, G, my uh, Gmail account with a computer I don't have. Phone I didn't have. I've never had a, a Samsung Galaxy. Somebody logged into my account. Yep, that's one of many. Philip's got even more. So, um, so he knew who I was, but all of a sudden he pretends like he doesn't know who I am. First he called. I wouldn't answer the phone. And at that, at that time, my voicemail said, Hi, this is Cindy. I'm not here. Leave a message. So if nothing else, he got it from the voicemail. But, he, you know, we'd been texting for years. So a couple of years. So um, I let him know in case I'm still at this point trying to be discreet. So I let him know it had something to do with my computer. Right? Like a wrong text. This is what somebody does when it's a wrong text, Mr. Perry. They don't pretend all of a sudden they don't know you. You can't even lie right. Yeah. Okay, then I got a bill, two bills, emailed to me. One is for 350 to my son's counselor. The other one was uh, this guy whose bill was in dispute. Mr. Perry sees the bills, and he pays the wrong one. See the same amount there, 375 350 this guy calls me and he goes, hey, I got your payment. And I'm like, oh my, what payment? I didn't pay you. I don't have any money and I don't had no intention of paying you. I need a copy of the check. Well, your, your bank will have it. Nope, you're not listening. I'm going to have to repeat myself again, aren't I? I didn't make the payment. Never intended to pay you, Mr. Kaufman. That was supposed to, uh, if, if I had asked Charles for help, I would have only told him about this guy. I would not have even mentioned this one. He saw the bills come in from hacking me. And then had the nerve to tell me, you can thank me later. And I'm like, thank you. You hacked me and you paid the wrong bill. So what exactly am I supposed to thank you for? Right? Okay. So it's been a mess for a long time. And uh, then we have, of course, the mess with uh, murder of a police officer who was trying to get it done right. Yep. See? I'm a witness in a murder trial, only they don't let me testify, and they punish me by making sure I don't have any money to pay my electric bill. So I went a week with no electricity, and I ate, I went and bought a thing of bean dip from Quick Trip, and I ate a little, munched on that all week. He likes to subjugate. It's called grand larceny with intent to coerce. Yep. Witness tampering, sir. I tell the Florida State's Attorney March 2nd, 2020 Mike didn't do it he was drugged and by the way not given a full tox panel so sure shit months later in May a deposition is taken where the guy says Mr. Neely was found unconscious and in respiratory distress my medical opinion told me he's been drugged with overdose I mean uh, drugged with opioids to the extent that he's overdosed he's about to die I administered Narcan he came to then he is tested at the hospital. We still don't know how much of the opioids he was given, who gave them to him. No one knows. No one looked. He's just automatically accused of murder. But, you know, we all know that you cannot hit some, I mean, you cannot beat someone to death. And uh, you cannot beat someone to death and look like that. He's got an IV in that right hand. See? See the IV? The arrest report says the only thing on him was his red swollen right hand. Beat someone to death. Mr. Neely and I have superpowers, according to them. Beat someone to death and ends up with nothing on him. What happens is when somebody's given a drug, the chemical composition of their body and blood begins to change in such a way that symptoms begin to come up out of respiratory distress and he's passed out once he's given the narcan that then alters those chemical the chemical composition in his blood and body again now he's coming too. when he should have been tested was immediately when the first responders saw he's in respiratory distress he's unconscious i believe he's been poisoned given drug overdose something let's test him now they didn't do it. They didn't test him until he got to the hospital. So you have two of us that were given something against our will or without our knowledge that altered our bodies 
that we suffered an injury to our bodies. I'm throwing up. I went and bought charcoal. And Mr. Ne and I, I'm not tested at all. Mr. Neely's not tested until too late. It's too late. Narcan's already been given. We don't know what it looked like. There still should have been some inquiries as to where the fuck the opioids came from. Lucky he didn't give it to him. There weren't any found in his bags, from what I understand, from what the testimony said. And you don't look like that after you beat someone to death. Internal decapitation, blunt force trauma to the head, extensive damage over the head, neck, and face, and strangulation. Nope. But, here's the thing. Six days before, he took a vandalism report. Jody Arias slashed the tires of Travis Alexander. The as next escalation was the next escalation was first degree murder. And that's what happened here. Car vandalism, next escalation is first degree murder of Chief Chief of Police six days later. Six days later. My report was done on the fourth of November, twenty nineteen. November tenth, Chief Miller's murdered in Pensacola. That's not fishy. That's not fishy at all. And uh, this is what Mr. Perry does. Oh, we got photos of you. Yeah, but you're stalking me. I did say that, right? I mean, you're, you're not listening. This is why I won't have a conversation with you. It's like talking to a wall. You don't have any idea what I'm saying to you. No idea. It's not getting. It's not clicking for you. Nothing clicks for you. It's like trying to talk to a, an infant. You know, a baby's crying in the crib. I, I had two two boys. They'd be crying in the crib. They're, they're, you know, little babies, six months old, two months old, three months old, whatever. And I'm trying, I'm in the middle of something, and I'm yelling at them, oh, hang on, I'll be right there, hang on, I'll be right there. They have no idea what I'm saying. They're still crying. That's what it's like to talk to Mr. Perry. Not a clue what I'm saying. Doesn't sink in. When you bother me, you guys get caught and told on and caught and told on and caught. There's never going to be a date. It's like, yelling at a baby I'll be right there they have no clue what you're saying they're still crying that's what that's what it's like to talk to these guys you try to say something that makes sense or that's reasonable a logical thinking that they'll respond appropriately and they never and they never do and you're just like oh my god I feel like I'm talking to a baby they stomp their feet and they cry and you're like I listen I, how why why would I waste my time talking to you you have no idea what I said what I'm saying I've said the same thing over and over, and you're not getting it. When you bother me, you get told on. Cause and effect. When you touch a hot stove, that's a cause. The effect is you get burned. When you bother me, that's the cause. You guys get caught more than ever in your lives. And I've said it over and over and over and over. And you don't get it. You can't let me go. It's not up to you, sir. It is not up to you. You're being stopped by cops that tell me all the stuff that you're trying to do pantyhose you want me to well, we, we got to get her to lose her job well she can she's got places to work within walking distance if you don't get her kicked out of her home we all know you've been trying to do that for about a year it's not the first time it's not the first time at all lucky told me uh when he came to see me at my club he wanted to know if i had signed a marriage license and i said nope i did not okay so here's what he did Mr. Perry first spoofs this account, Lisa K, trying to pretend he's Lisa Neely. I call him on it. That's identity theft. So he changes it to Lisa Lane, Lisa Lane, still Charles Perry. I, I believe at first it was uh, Burst, Josh Burson. So uh, here it is. Did Lucky visit the club? And I'm lying. Yeah, I'm not going to tell anybody anything at this point. We don't do court in Facebook. They think we do court in Facebook. Nope, we do court in court. So um, he's asking me questions. I'm getting, this is, you know, I did. And guess what? He asked me if I signed a, a, a marriage license. I said, of course not. Why the hell would I do that? That's what I thought. It looked like it was not your signature. I said, that's marriage fraud. File something to get rid of that. If there's an actual marriage filed somewhere, I want half of everything you own. But I'm not even, I'm nothing to you. You've lost your mind. Um, someone else told us that you were hanging out with my family, inserting yourself in my life, making decisions for me. You're not legally or morally authorized to make. 
calling the landlord. And uh, he was like, man, uh, if, if that's all you have to do to be married, he said people, people started thinking he's a little nutty, a little wacky, when uh, six years into this, he's always by himself. He's with her family and her friends, but never with her. She's suing him for protective orders. He keeps getting him kicked out, she'll sue again. He'll get that kicked out, she'll sue again. She wants a protective order. She wants this guy to leave her alone. The other guy said, if all you have to do is watch a woman on TV and go around and tell everybody that's your wife, I'm married to Jennifer Aniston. That's how wacky it is. If they don't have to like you even, golly. So he also asked me, um, he said, we've told them to get out of your wallet. If they mugged you, five guys would tackle you and take her purse back and give it to her. It's called chivalry. Mr. Perry, shut the fuck up. Shut up. When you talk to me, I hate it and it pisses me off. And then you get told on more. Been that way for years. You need to keep up with everybody else. I, I'm not going to waste my time talking to somebody who doesn't understand what I'm saying. Everybody else understands it. Why don't you? I don't have puppets and crayons. Perry, stop. You're pissing me off. He'll type in my computer when I'm trying to, like he thinks it's a conversation. And when I say stop, he'll, he'll stop. Anyways, okay, so um, this, so he says, uh, um, you, you know, you're inconvenient, inconveniencing people in my town because she owes people money and she can't make it because you're taking all her money away from her, her job, running her customers off, and then she can't pay people because uh, you want to get out of lawsuit. You are trying to make it where she can't fight you in court. Get your fucking hands out of her of, out of her wallet. So I hope it gets better for you. I think we're all tired of watching you suffer. Why don't they just go into court and face you like men? Yep, tampering with Mel, David. Um, so this is uh, these are witness statements. People saw Mr. Perry coming up. I got photos of you, right? But I've been saying you're a stalker and you do that. It's creepy. It's crime. A pattern of harassment, sir, intended to cause fear and duress, and you do that every day, all day long. You don't have a life. You're a bizarre bore. You're pathetic. I don't know. Okay, so, t uh, oh, what did, so what, what happened is David has his, had his people stand right next to me. Should have seen the look on Mike's face when I told him that. Um, okay, so yeah, the same powder that was in the back of my car is all over this hotel room. Yeah, that's not fishy. That's not fishy at all. We're all born yesterday, right? Uh, what else? Okay, I got to get to... Now, this uh, thing with the mail. Let's, maybe it's... Let me see. Nope. Oh. Here we go. This was from my school book, guys. Tulsa Police. Look at that. These are the code of ethics. No bias against genders or race. And I've been discriminated against like a motherfucker. So that's not cool. And uh, you got to keep it confidential, officer whoever. Gave my police report right over to the offender. That I'm arrested for a false police report within a week, and there's not been an investigation to decide all that. And there's been no, there is no evidence of a political vendetta. There's not any, because there wasn't one. I had all kinds of people I could call, had I even worked on Texas legislation. I think what's happening is Mr. Perry's delusional and a little bit slow and not able to do, to, he doesn't understand what his duties are as a legislator. You don't stalk women and call that legislative duties. It's not what you need to do to pass a law in Texas, is it? So whoever gave my police report right over to them, they, you know, you violated the code of ethics for policing. You could have got me killed, may have gotten lucky killed. Because had you done the right thing from right the beginning, and then when they obstructed justice, you had another chance and destroyed my evidence, you had another chance. And, and you didn't. Lucky. Mike's sitting where Mike's sitting. And Lucky is where he is because they were trying to do the right thing and you bailed on him. You bailed on him. We're not okay with that. I haven't sued you. Remember what I said? I told your attorney. 
Jerry Bender. I'm not going to sue. I'm going to outcop them. Watch me. And I have. Haven't I? I did something right if the Florida State's attorney's going, what do you do for a living? Mm, I'm an adult entertainer. Are you a cop? I just said I'm an adult entertainer, sir. You're not in law enforcement that you need to tell me that I need to know about, are you? You know what I just said? Florida State's attorney, I'm repeating myself. I'm an adult entertainer. But, you know, I, I am good at what I do, and that doesn't mean I'm a cop. But you can still do help with law enforcement, especially when you're the victim, and you're raised by law enforcement, and you got all the mix that we needed, political law enforcement for this one. Doesn't, it doesn't mean my title's a cop. Okay, and then we got this. Uh, it, anybody that knows how I do food delivery, I'm going to tell you something. I cannot find a fucking thing. I am really bad with directions. I'll come out of a neighborhood and turn, you know, trying to go back to the main street, and I fucking turn the wrong way every single time. You can take it to Vegas and bet on it. I'll do it, and I'm trying really hard not to. So can you imagine me being a cop? I'm, like, driving around. Where's the damn bank? Where's the damn bank? I, I wouldn't find the, the, the people robbing the bank would fucking be in Mexico by the time I find the place where it is. So, I mean, that alone should tell you I'm not a cop. Anyways, this... Uh, this, Mr. Perry, is witness tampering. I guess I'll finally hear what you have to say. Uh, who, who? And he had asked before about four times. How did you know Mike, Lucky, uh, Mike had to be begged to go to Pensacola? Because, you know, we planned this whole murder thing, and then he really was kind of reluctant to go, so we had to coax him into it. Kind of like he always coaxed me to work, go back to the club, go back to dancing. And then um, now, like speaking of food delivery, I've signed up for four. I've signed up for four different de delivery, four food delivery. And... Um, one is more grocery-like stuff, but Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, and there was a, I can't remember the name of it, but I signed up. I haven't done anything with them yet. But, uh, so, but what happens is when you get up in the morning, you're looking at them to see which one's busier. What time, you decide what time you're going to work. You know, it's, you're, you're, you got a completely free, flexible schedule. You can decide to work for anyone that you want to work for and in any part of town, whenever you want. So how would you know when I'm going to work, which company I'm going to work for, and which time I'm going to be in? But Mr. Perry apparently likes DoorDash because he pushes that one. So you got what? You got your little buddies? DoorDash tells us it's an algorithm. You cannot choose which driver you get. You can't. It's an algorithm. They said you'd have to hack in order to do for him to have somebody like his proxy, proxy stalker call in to order to DoorDash or place an order with DoorDash, and then she's the delivery person. He would have to hack her. You would have to hack to know when I'm working, which one am I working for, which part of town. So, I mean, uh, everybody that does driving, you can make pretty good money in it. Uh, if you do it right, there's a system in place. One thing I don't do is I don't take long distance, you know, really far orders. I don't take them. I'm not driving all the way out to, you know, wherever. <coughs> I'm just not going to do it. I'm wasting my time. Time is money in that business. I don't go to restaurants that I have to wait in either. I don't. They get dinked on that. You go, you know, you expect the food to be ready. You walk in, you pick it up, and you take it to somebody's house. The restaurants get dinked if they don't have it ready. So, um, and some of them have a, most of them have it ready most of the time. Some have it ready some of the times. So, I mean, it just depends. But um, the restaurants get dinked if they don't have that shit ready to go. Um, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's more of a time thing than anything else. But Mr. Perry is pushing door dad. Oh, go, go dance out on that club. Can we not get her back out at that club and on a schedule? So we know when she's going to be there so we can mess with her and send guys like Terry, Terry, Dave Robertson, Terry Wagner, Mickey James, Joel, Pinto, all those guys to just fuck with her and fuck with her and fuck with her and run all her customers off. I heard you even rented out the whole club sometimes. So you could monitor who I'm talking to and how much money I made. I mean, you had a girl complain. They're coming in here telling me I got to make her like him. Or look for a way to, for him to put her back in jail until she changes her mind. What happened to dinner and a movie? What's really going on here? Because this is not about getting a date. What's really going on here? What the hell happened in Dallas? Who's, wh th this Fabian guy sounds like a really cool guy and they're scared to death of him. Please tell me what the hell's going on. 
I said, I'll have my guy get in touch with you. He did. He tells me. Uh, she said the same thing to me. She said to you, they're trying to play Hotel California so you feel stuck. You don't want to let me go? I'm sorry, what? Civil War ended slavery. You fuck off. It's not up to you. You're getting told on. Mr. Perry, your doll is not your friend, man. Are you getting a date with that? Or are you getting told on? Your little girl act? You know, most people are smart enough to change what they're doing if it's not working. Another reason I won't talk to you. You're not that smart. I don't have time for stupid people. I really don't. So you had to coax him. So Mr. Perry likes to use door to coax me. Don't no do, do DoorDash. Why? You got somebody gonna call in? DoorDash tells us it's an algorithm. You can't choose the driver for your people to call in orders unless you're hacking. So you hacking? Yep, I think you are. Because sometimes when I want to make money, you jam them all up and I can't do anything. Like when a court thing is due or a bill, important bill is due. So my guys sit there and record all that, Mr. Perry. There was one time I said, look, in, look at what he just said. Did that, did the, did, was that my phone or did he do that? He goes, let me rewind. The, hold on, I'm going to rewind. He, you know, that was him. Yep. Sitting there watching everything you fucking do on my phone, bitch. Okay, so... There's that. And then uh, the court thingy. Yep. My guy calls me on the 11th of February. Hang on a second. Alright, so my guy calls me on the 12th. This is what David did, I guess. Calls me on the 12th, and he goes, they've been talking all day about impeding your appeal. So, let's do this. I want you to file the amended petition with the Tulsa County Court and the DOR. And I want you to mail it. Don't walk it in. It's going to cost you a little bit more. I want you to mail it. They're going to do something, and I'm going to do something with it. So I did. I mailed it. So, <clears throat> he had me include the receipt. Look at this. This is when it was filed. I drove this. Actually, up to, up to Oklahoma City, he had me include with it the Exhibit F right here, the receipt. That's Exhibit F. He had me do that so that it was with the petition. And if it was delayed or tampered with at all, because what does this say? This receipt says delivery in what's in the same town. Expected to 12 at the latest for the fourth Monday the 14th Charles shut the hell up bitch shut the hell up. Why can't you control yourself and be normal? Okay, so we understand David was the one that messed with that this was my personal mail they were having forwarded this goes to the attorney uh, general of Oklahoma address confidentiality program for women who are being stalked by men who are creepy um, Charles, you don't have a love life. Anybody can sit and watch TV and, you know, fantasize about some woman on television. That's not real. That's not a love life. Nobody's holding your hand. You don't have a date. It's not reciprocated. I don't like you. I'm not in love with you. You don't have a woman that just can't keep her hands off you. You're by yourself, making a fool of yourself for 12 years. You're raping. You're fucking raping. You got the skill set of a one-year-old little girl. How embarrassing. A one-year-old little girl watches Frozen and pretends that's her life and plays with a doll like you. When you're going to do something important, you don't have time for that kind of shit. You and your powerful men do not act like you. They're too busy. They don't pester and torment women. They don't starve women. They're busy working, trying to do, make the world a better place. You don't have power. You don't have any. If you have power, go be normal. You're inept socially. You're subpar socially, mentally, and emotionally. And you've done nothing but prove that to be the case day after day after day. And when you mess with me, you guys get told on. Like my prosecutor calling me up on the 11th. Mail it. Don't take it in. Mail it. That's because he heard you all talking about what you were going to do. When you mess with me, he works harder, Charles. You can't keep up, can you? So, um, this was my mail that wasn't even sealed. Let's tell them, uh, just don't seal it and we'll just say it came out. It just fell out. And they didn't. Somebody at that office did what they said. Wow. Hmm. 
This is a, an official government office. Mr. Robertson, is that you? Meddling in my mail? It's federal, though. It's mail. So it goes to the attorney general, and then they forward it to us. Well, they're forwarding my mail from my home to their house. The postman put this on it. Let's check because something ain't right. It's just, I can't forward it. I got to check into it, and I ask him about it. I go, what's this? Your mail's being forwarded. Yep. But this says, what's, he goes, I put that sticker on because I looked over and I saw you standing there. So I was kind of curious. If she's here, why is she forwarding her mail? And I go, I've not filled out any kind of forwarding anything, sir. Nothing. Not a thing. The landlord was called the very next day on the 12th in anticipation of, see, we put, we put the receipt as part of the petition in anticipation you would fuck with the mail. We wanted it documented that it was mailed in plenty of time. Because we heard you guys talking about it. And then you, in anticipation of it not getting there in time because you tampered with it, called my landlord. We fucked up her appeal. So we need you to kick her out. And he even fussed with you. How many people have you gotten kicked out of your homes? We just had her sign a lease. I thought you said this was going to be okay. Record it. When Perry fucks with me, that's what happens. There's never a date. There's no reciprocation. He's not loved or wanted. He's being kicked off. It's not up to you. Whoever said, we can't let her go. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not up to you. This is not, uh, you know, the Noah's Ark and Civil War ended slavery back in 18-something-something. Where, did you not go to school? Did you not go to school? It's not up to you. You're violating my civil rights, my constitutional rights. It's not up to you, sir. I think you didn't go to school. Charles, we do not live in a world where what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. You have a poverty mentality or you wouldn't think that way. Entitlement. Welfare. There's not enough to go around. I'm going to take everybody else's shit. Actually, I believe there is enough to go around. What I would like, I've seen God provide for me, but then you take it. If you gave Jordan money and somebody attacked her and took her money, the money you gave her, wouldn't she be pissed? I think you would. Where's your family when you betray them? Where's Jacqueline, Jordan, and Matthew when you betray them? You're bothering me, and you need to stop. I don't like you. You're you know, betraying your family, chasing around a woman doesn't even like you. That's pretty pathetic. You don't have anything real. Didn't your friend tell you that? Charles, you don't have a love life. You don't have a real love life, and you don't have a cover-up. And you're taking time away from my friend, my family, and my business for your imagination. Come on with that. I'm not going to allow you to do that to my time, take up my time like that anymore. Didn't he tell you that? Wasn't he frustrated with you? We, we heard you did. You had a friend say that. Stop taking up my time. Stop wasting my time. You have nothing real. You have no cover up, and she's suing you. She's moved twice to get away from you. There's no dates. There's no texts. There's nothing. You're alone. You're by yourself. Come on with that. So don't. Don't impose your imaginary soap opera on everybody else. We're, people don't like that. You're not wanted. You're not loved. It doesn't go both ways. You're by yourself in that romance of yours. You watch TV and you make something up in your head that's not real. You're completely disconnected from reality. Completely disconnected from reality. And no, I won't talk to you because you don't understand what I'm saying any more than if I hollered out to an infant crying in a crib. I'll be right there. I'm, I'm repeating myself constantly, and you're not getting it. Cause and effect. When you bother me, you get told on. That's it. It's been that way for years. You're being stopped, sir. Your conduct is offensive and illegal and immoral, and you're being stopped. By people who are good people. They don't like that. Uh, so, so there's that. I mean, we, we do what we do to catch you. Just like if a narcotics police officer is um you know gives his phone number out to a drug dealer and the drug dealer sells him drugs and um the thing is you know you're dealing with police you know that and you still do it anyway and then you get all shocked and dismayed oh we got caught well but you've known you know the deal you're dealing with police she's got help she's got help you can't get to we don't have leaks perry you have leaks we don't because it's a need to know everything's nobody talks there's, it's, you're dangerous. Nobody's going to talk and get somebody killed. 
Nobody, you're, you're not ta you're not included in it unless you're trusted. And you got to be, you know, you got to prove yourself out a little bit before you're told anything about it. And we don't have leaks, and you do. So uh, I guess last night somebody was like, he involved her whole family in this bullshit. I think my family was probably threatened, or they wouldn't do something like that. I know my family pretty well. They don't like hurting people. So, Mr. Perry, I mean, you know, you got you got caught again today. Pantyhose. I think we got we got to try to get her kicked out of Oklahoma, Robertson. You've been trying to do that for you know over a year, sir. You're calling my landlord, Charles. They promised me they wouldn't talk to you. I asked them about it specifically. I have a I have a stalker. I expect my privacy to be respected. My safety to be, um, is, is important, don't you think? Because if I get hurt, you're going to have a problem. My mail's hurt. They got my address, forwarded my mail. So that's their problem. They're going to have to explain that. Right? They're going to have to explain that. So are you. Now, what we did tell them is, now, let's say, let's say that this was a clerical, cler uh, a clerical error and the county clerk messed up. On the receipt of uh, of this, the DOR and this, um, then it's a clerical. It's an error. There's no crime. But if there was, uh, if if not, then there's crime because they've already got a recording of you talking about it, and which is exactly why he had me put this in as Exhibit F, and mail it. Don't take it in. Don't walk it in. Mail it. They're gonna do something, and I'm gonna do something too. Robertson, that was you, I guess. All right, so, I mean, all you had to do was leave me alone. That's it. For four years, I didn't tell anybody you had a problem. And then I moved. And then I moved again. I completely changed my life twice. Started all over again. And you wouldn't have needed any kind of no you wouldn't, nothing. Just go on with your life and leave everybody alone. You are icking your slime in delusion all over everybody else, and we're sick of it. Same as people are offended by it like they are with her. Her. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please that leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. What? Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm curious. What, Sir, please what leave. Look how many people expressed Dis disgust with the way this man behaved so many people um, I mean golly and she had to do this to get the police to help her thank God I have police from somewhere else nobody should have to put up with this kind of crap nobody should have to make a big thing of it to get police to help she tried she now though has a restraining order against this man and she had to move too no woman should have to move or sue to get a man to leave him alone go find a woman that likes you you got money. Go to Vegas. They got every weirdo escort you can imagine in Vegas. Every kind of club. You want to peep? They'll let you peep. They'll let you watch them take a shower. But you got to pay for it. It's not free. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why no, I'm here. No, no. Leave to me. me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No. Leave me alone. Zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you. But please, leave please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. I can't live here anymore because you stop me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her. And you need to leave her alone. And this is Bacon. Leave me alone! 
Please. Just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. It doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting.